Welcome to our webinar on Getting Ready for Advocacy Day. This is Amy O'Leary and Titus Dostromenius is with me from Strategies for Children. So, we have to move the slides. There we go, Advocacy Day 2020 for Early Education and Care and School Age Programs is scheduled for Thursday, March 5th. And this year we are doing something new, which we'll talk more about later, but we are gonna encourage folks to come to the State House, but also to participate from wherever you are on March 5th. So if you think about what words or images come to mind when you hear the word advocacy, we often hear things like standing up for people, speaking out, taking a stand, and fighting for funding or for good policy. And that's what we're gonna be doing on March 5th. And so why do we have Advocacy Day? Uh, we know it's mostly about the children and families in the Commonwealth. So here are some of our uh, children that we are fighting for. But this is also why we are fighting. This is uh, the graph showing the funding levels from the Massachusetts Department of Early Education and Care. And you can see that we are at, our, at a high right now, but how long it has taken us to recover from the recession and ensure that there are increased investments in high quality early education and care and school age programs across the Commonwealth. And we know that these numbers have gone up because advocates have taken a stand, developed relationships with legislators, and been specific about what we want to see in state budget. This is also what we're fighting for, for higher salaries for the EEC workforce. Titus and I hear from people across the state who are struggling to fill uh, teaching positions, to open classrooms, to better serve children and families, and we are in a workforce crisis. We can thank our legislature for investing recently in, in the rates and other ways to support the educators, but we know that we are filling a hole that is very wide and that while these are all good steps, we need to continue to support educators throughout the Commonwealth with increased investments. So this is a picture uh, from Advocacy Day a few years ago, and you can see filling the Great Hall in, at the State House. So, you know, many groups have Advocacy Days and have people come to hear from speakers and then meet with legislators. So this is a good opportunity, but we can't be, have this be the only time that we are talking and, and working with legislators. We need to make sure we're building relationships throughout the year. And uh, then on this day is a good opportunity to kind of come out in full force and be together to uh, send a message. So this Advocacy Day, we're asking you to join your colleagues from across the Commonwealth to ask legislators for their continued support and increased investments for children and families. You can see here the sponsoring organizations. So we really have built a big tent to have uh, many groups be part of this day. And at, we'll talk later about what we are gonna ask for, but each of these groups is working to get people to participate from programs, but also come to the State House and also think about our big ask for the legislature uh, as we think about the state budget process. And why are we doing it on March 5th? As you can see, this is these uh, kind of key dates for the legislature for this session. As we talked about on our first webinar, we have a two year legislative session in Massachusetts which means it starts in January of 2019 and will end on July 31st, 2020. Each year we have a state budget that is passed, but bills have two years to become law. So we started this year with the governor's budget proposal, which is known as House 2, because it's the second year of the legislative session that he is filing his budget recommendations. So we have on our website a breakdown of what the governor included in his budget proposal. This year, the governor included uh, funding for rates. You can see all of the, piece, the, the, the line items where he funded in early education and care. The reason why we're having Advocacy Day on March 5th 
is because right now the Massachusetts House of Representatives and our Senate are working on their own budget proposals. So as we talked about in our first webinar, knowing who to talk about what to, but also when. Um, it would not be a good idea to talk with the House after their budget proposal comes out. So we know right now legislators are meeting with members of the leadership to talk about their priorities and what they wanna see included in the state budget for their proposal. We wanna make sure that many representatives include high quality early education and school age in their budget recommendations when they meet with the leadership in the House and the Senate. So March 5th is a great opportunity to make our message heard and to be specific about what we are asking for. As you can see, April the House works on their budget recommendations. In May, the Senate will file their budget. And then in June, you will have representatives from both the House and the Senate that come together to create one budget that they will vote on uh, before July 1st, hopefully, when our fiscal year should start. And so it's critical that we make sure that as they're negotiating and doing their deliberations, that we are not only sending our message on March 5th, but throughout the process until the end of July. We also see that the, excuse me, until the end of June. We see that the uh, formal legislation session ends on July 31st, and uh, we know that election day is on Tuesday, November 3rd. Just an aside, we also know that uh, Massachusetts is now part of Super Tuesday, so we hope everybody will take advantage of this opportunity to vote in the primary on March 3rd. Okay, as we talked about in our first webinar, in Massachusetts, we have our state Senate and our House of Representatives. And you have one state Senator and one state representative. And you can see that there are 40 state senators and 160 state representatives. So right now, um, the first part of the legislature's process is the House of Representatives. So those 160 representatives will be developing their budget asks for the next fiscal year. And we are working on our ask for what we will uh, be talking about on March 5th. So you can see there are many, the groups that are uh, participating have included what they are gonna ask the legislature for. And you can see we have uh, the rate reserve, we have um, a fund to help support educators that have credentialing. There's also something to think about educators who have a BA degree. We have the Commonwealth Preschool Partnership Initiative, the Head Start State Supplemental Grant, Jump Start, Neighborhood Villages, Parent Child Home, Homeworks, and After School and Out of School Time Grants. We also have an ask for the R&Rs, um, which we will be including for access management. So we'll talk more about the materials, but this is what we are asking the legislature for when we all go on March 5th. And as I mentioned, this year we are trying something new and having two ways to participate. You can come to the State House in Boston and you can participate from your program. So the first thing to do is to figure out who represents you. So hopefully after our first webinar, everybody is aware of who represents them at the State House, but it's very easy to do to go to this website and print out your information for you. Then help others, help the families that you serve and coworkers that you work with to do the same and print out the information. You can also determine the legislatures who represent where your program is located. If you need help in doing that, please let us know. To, to find business uh, representative, you know, who represents a business, you'll need the four digit um, code after a zip code. So we're happy to help you figure that out because remember all of the, our representatives are based on our addresses. So if you know who represents you, which is where you vote is important, but you also might wanna know who represents the program where, and where it's located, which is important because you also have a connection to the children and families that you serve there. Um, so it's a good, it's, most educators like to know both sets of legislators if they're different. So if you're coming to the State House, this is what you can do now. Confirm who represents you and who represents your program. 
Invite your legislators to come with you to the speaking program at 10 a.m. This is something different that we're trying this year, but as we think about gathering 500 people in the Great Hall, we want to make sure that there's many people there as possible to hear that message. Then you should contact your state senator and representative to schedule a meeting in their office. And we have let all the legislators know that we are coming on this day and they should be expecting to hear from constituents about setting up a meeting in their offices. And then get ready for social media. Start following your legislators. We are gonna develop um, a sheet that has the legislators who are on Twitter, their handles, but this is something that you can do in your program and because we'll talk about our opportunities for social media on that day. And then if you're coming on March 5th, you're gonna have to park and go through security, so plan for extra time. We know that some communities are also sending buses. So uh, we know they're coming from all over the Commonwealth and we know that it's hard to come to Boston during rush hour traffic. You will then head to the Great Hall on the second floor and please ask for directions. You can see that we'll have a registration at 9.30 and a light breakfast will be available. At 10 o'clock, our speaking program will start and then we will break and then folks will go off to meet with their legislators. Uh, we have confirmed speakers for the speaking program that include the Commissioner of Early Education and Care. We have the Police Chief from Pittsfield, uh, Senator Sal Domenico, and Representative Trisha Farley Bouvier. And we are working on, on, on securing an educator to speak uh, during that day. We also would love everybody to wear red so that when we have uh, people walking around the state house, we'll, we will all look like we're part of one big group. And please bring artwork from children in your program to share with legislators. And as you think about tweeting, uh, we have two hashtags for the day, hashtag value early educators and hashtag value after school educators. Now, if you're participating from your program, find out who represents you and, and, and your program and contact your state senator and state rep and let them know that you can't attend the state house on March 5th, but that you hope that they will attend the speaking program in the Great Hall. That way they're hearing from their constituents that we are paying attention to where they're, if they're gonna go to the, the speaking program. Let the families and uh, know that you're participating from your program and get ready on social media. And then if you're on your program, you should also wear red that day and get ready to tweet. We'll talk later about ways that you can participate, but taking photos of staff and families with signs and emailing them and also tweeting at legislators. You can also think about inviting your state senator and state rep to come visit your program in March. As we talked about, we can't just pick one day to advocate. We, we can have it as part of a bigger strategy, but this way legislators will have the opportunity to come to your turf and see what a high quality program looks like. We are happy to help you think through invitations, setting up a day for a visit, uh, any help that you might need, we're happy to help support you. You can also send artwork from your children and your programs to the legislators. And you can also have educators and families send notes to your elected officials. So we will talk about that in a minute. I know that we're going uh, pretty quickly through this, but if you are, if you have any questions, please remember to type them in the box. So we are going to work to make some sample signs. These uh, are what I just we used. Um, I was at the NAUIC Public Policy Forum in Washington D.C. And they have these signs. So I love ECE, I care about child care. And then they made this one with a bubble about elected officials should invest in early ed because it just makes sense. So you can fill in, we'll have some templates for these so that you can make signs. But I am sure that you can come up with fantastic signs um, in your programs. We also have language for sample letters that you can send. So we have a letter specifically for early educators, a letter from families, and then a letter from students, it should say in higher education, uh, that, can, that can be customized and sent uh, to legislators. Again, these don't have to be long. A handwritten note would even be better. 
but we just want to make sure that we're kind of having a flood of activity uh, for our elected officials beyond March 5th. And then we are going to develop some sample tweets so um, that you can uh, have ready to go. We also are thinking about a tweet storm, uh, which means that we would all be tweeting for the same hour. And I would love to hear from programs who are, who are gonna participate from their programs, what would make the most sense? And do they need to get permission from their directors? Or is there a way we can create um, a time that's easy for folks to do it during that day? I think you know another piece we've been talking about is really um, talking about the day and you can tweet at legislators and say, we're not at the state house today, but we're in circle time learning about X. Or now it's time to be in the water table and that's learning about balance <laughs> and water rate, uh, all math, early math skills. So just to bring to life what's happening in your programs. And we wanna have both tweeting at legislators, but also just uh, using the hashtag so we can be trending and really help send a strong message. So the next steps are to register and let us know how you are, will participate. In order for us to make sure we can get materials out, we want to make sure we know who is participating. When, uh, if you are coming to the State House, we will ask everyone to sign up and register when you arrive there. And the other piece that would be really important is if you're participating from your program, to let us know how many people are participating because I think it would be very powerful to be able to get a handle on how many people aren't at the state house, but are thinking about ways to participate from their program. And we mentioned this before, but we don't want any one hit wonders. So while it is important to pick one day to come together, we really want this to be the first step in either building a relationship with your elected officials or continuing to build a relationship. We know that uh, March 6th will probably be an advocacy day for other groups. And we know that legislators have a lot of priorities. They're gonna have priorities for their own districts and they're gonna have priorities statewide. So this is a good opportunity to be specific and ask them uh, for increased funding and support as they craft their budget. We also wanna make sure that people follow up so that you are, um, if you're following up with materials, inviting them to come visit your programs, talking about the impact of what we've seen, if you have teachers who benefit from the Early Educator Scholarship Program, if you've been able to um, use funding to support parent fees, you know, where to talk about the crisis of the workforce and who you're competing with. You know, the real life stories are so critical to taking some of these numbers and putting them really to life. We really want you to have fun too. Um, we know that early educators and after school folks know how to have fun. And this really is an opportunity uh, to be creative, to be innovative, to think about how you can send this message. And please ask questions and let us know what else you need. We wanna make sure that you feel supported, that you're not doing this alone, that we're all in this work together. And there are no silly questions. So if you think that you might, you're supposed to know something, or you think that uh, it might be common sense and it's not a good question, please ask it. Because if you are wondering, other folks are probably wondering too. And then just remember that you can do it. Um, we know that sometimes, um, it can be intimidating. You can think that your voice doesn't matter, but we know that the voices of the children and families and the educators who are doing the work are critical. You can also have children participate and, and talking about kind of what they love about being in their program and send those kinds of messages. We did get a question about pronouncing the EEC commissioner's last name. Uh, when you do ask the commissioner this in person, she kind of insists on be calling Commissioner Sam. But to the best of my knowledge and ability, the way that you pronounce your last name is Commissioner Agner Triwergi. So the G is a hard G. So you can practice that, uh, Commissioner Samantha Agner Triwergi. Um, so thank you for that question. 
Any other questions through the, the Q&A chat box or feedback for what we just talked about? One other piece to really think about is how you engage families. Uh, whether you take a photo of them holding up a sign, whether you capture some of their words about how important your program is to their family, to them having a job, to them feeling secure that they're leaving their children in a high quality program, their um, stories are powerful. We also know that if you have our contact in your community with business leaders or employers who can help spread the message, higher ed institutions, so how do we how are we supporting educators going back to school? If you have um, educator voice would be really important. So having a sign that talks really about what where the perspective of educators, you know, why they do this work, we can come up with some key questions to respond to on the signs. Um, any other questions? We'll give it a few more minutes. We also know that historically we have had a really good turnout for this day. We will, Strategies for Children will post a blog on our website and we would love to feature some of the at home uh, at the program participants as well. And uh, we are available for any Q&A that you have after the webinar. If you know folks who haven't been able to attend the webinar today, whether they're in your program or you're our represented organizations, or, or you know, if you have other colleagues across the state, to really um, make sure that we help uh, spread the word. Okay, we have from Kim Davenport, will the session in the Great Hall be broadcast live? We should think about that. Oh, Kim, thank you, the packets. All legislators will be delivered a packet with the information about the ask, about the sponsoring organizations, uh, some facts and figures from the r and about a Massachusetts fact sheet, as well as a fact sheet from um, the National Women's Law Center. So you will not, you can bring your own lead behinds from your program or from your community but all legislators, whether they have visits or not, will be getting a packet. So that's a really good thing that we should include in the follow-up, that you don't have to come up with all the information um, that we will have, um, all legislators will receive, and we can, we can let you know and give you a sample packet so that you can see what they are getting. Yes. We should think about Facebook Live to do the, um, and maybe we can record it as well. It's a good, it's a really good idea. Thanks, Kim. Any other questions? We've been trying to keep these webinars to a half an hour so that folks can, um, you know, folks can listen to them after the webinar. I just want to reiterate about the signs. I know uh, that you guys can make great signs. Uh, children can participate. Uh, it, it's a really great opportunity to take photos and make all of these stories come alive. I'll also just push our Voices from the Field blog where we highlight educators from across the uh, state and ask them different questions. So if you have educators in, their pro in your programs who are interested in sharing their story um, more broadly, we would love to have them participate. We have a question about, about the need or availability across the state. The R&R fact sheet will have some of that information, but we can make sure that we share some of that, whatever we have available. Uh, we can certainly share that. Uh, we have a question about connecting with your legislators beforehand. Yes, you can call their offices anytime between now and March 5th. They all were sent an email with our schedule of the day that we have the speaking program at 10. And then anytime after 11, please feel free to make appointments with your legislators. Um, and if you can't meet with them, you should still certainly stop by their office to let them know that you have, have been there. And the hashtags we can uh, be at using, we have hashtag value early educators and hashtag value after school educators. We can also, there's also a national one that's hashtag childcare now, 
hashtag ECE wins, but we'll make sure we include that in our one pager about Twitter. And then we have a, from Colin Jones putting a plug for a revenue ask. You are correct about, uh, there's a lot of talk around the uh, addition of dollars for K to 12, the transit, um, and kind of having talking points around how we pay for expanding these line items. So um, that's good to think about, Colin, and we can make sure that we include that in the talking points for the day. So we will follow up with materials that will include, we have started collecting all the uh, Twitter handles of legislators. We will send that. We will send a sheet of, of sample tweets. We will send um, also the sample letters and language that you can help incorporate, and we can send some templates to make the signs um, so that you can get busy working over the next week and a half, uh, next week, I guess, to uh, make sure your voice is heard. Okay, thank you so much for the questions and the good observations. So we, I think we have, make sure, yep, yeah, we've covered all the chat and questions. Titus and I are also available anytime between now and then. So please reach out to us. And I would also encourage you to start tweeting now uh, in anticipation of Advocacy Day. Either like we're heading to the State House or we're getting ready to participate in our program just to start building some momentum. So uh, thank you so much for all that you do for young children and families across the Commonwealth every single day. And thank you for participating in the webinar. Um, as we mentioned, we'll send the follow-up and we'll also have the recording so you can share it with folks who couldn't join us today. So thank you so much and have a wonderful day.